I'm just like, damn, we can't do nothing. We got people going over to Delaware trying to get, you know, liquor and all those other stuff. Because everything was shut down. It's like, all right, damn. So we got stuff happening in Delaware now that usually wouldn't happen because all the food mm. in Delaware. And it's just like, people felt like they was trapped. Like people felt like, kind of like they, for lack of a better term, they was incarcerated and then they had no, no place to go. They couldn't do anything. And like people not used to sitting at home with their thoughts. Like you're not used to sitting in the house with your shit. Yet. Welcome to Travel Tuesday Happy Hour, where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world. Today, we have an awesome young man. Tell us who you are and what you do. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? My name is George. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm in the process of moving to New York at the top of the new year. Um, I just graduated with my MBA from St. George University in data analytics. Um, I'm going into an internal consultant role in finance at Verizon in New Jersey. Um, so I'm very excited for that going forward so that's awesome so data analytics i mean you probably saw the writing on the wall a long time ago it's like big data is everything especially in the area you grew up right it's yeah. like everything's about selling your data finding ways to make value out of your data and so what got you really into like doing data analytics uh so i would say my time at amazon i used to work for amazon as a manager and like everything revolves around data. All the decisions is backed by, da by data. So nothing they do is like for like the greater good of people is all like numbers. And they're the biggest company in the world. So I see there's always positions being created um, for data purposes, like data scientists, data analysts. And I seen out the new wave going forward. So I figured why not jump in on there? Um, I, did, I did the same thing in undergrad with supply chain when I was in school supply chain became a big thing. And I was like, uh, let me transfer from accounting to supply chain because I could see that wave is starting to uh, come up next. So I'm all about finding the trend and then hopping on it before it becomes too popular. So that's why, you know, that's why I just graduated with the MBA in data analytics. That's dope. So what do you ultimately want to do with that? Um, uh, so I, know, I, know, I know how to cool things now. So I'm good with like Python and SQL and stuff like that. So... That's always a skill I could have just in case I want to transition out of this uh, job I'm in. Um, the job I'm in, I'm in now, I didn't expect to get. It was an internship that I applied for. And I applied for, it's called Business Excellence. So it had like data, finance, all, all the other different things. And then I applied for a data intelligence one. I got the Business Excellence one. And that was just the one that let me in finance. But uh, it's opportunities in my company to go from finance to data roles um, and my team works with the data team as well so I can get into that just in case I want to change fields and it gives it looks good in my resume so my resume is very diverse um, from like business to cosmetics production and you now data so you know in finance that's, so right, so it makes sense. that's awesome yeah I mean I I manage a large group of um, black and tech so I definitely might want to I'm gonna reach out to you after this because I know a couple of people that's going to want to link up with you um, primarily around what you do and your ability to tie in the data and the finance piece together. So that's mm -hmm. dope. That's dope. And hopefully, you know, that's something that <clears throat> we can, you can definitely leverage to kind of grow our community. Cause that's the one thing that we don't understand. How is our data being used and how could we use our own data to be able to build self wealth? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, Hey, I'm, I'm always to talk, able to talk to you afterwards to kind of like, I'm just envisioning these great things that you can do, not just for, you know, for the world, but like within our community, because, you know, it's one thing to, to see people like you doing it and doing it well, you know, we need this kid, these kids to see it too. You know what I mean? Um, to see that there's more than just basketball and football and, and and sports and and you know and and the the glitzy and glamoury things to do you know what I mean and mm -hmm. and look you know there's there's money out here to be made so um, that's amazing that's amazing and um, so where do you say you're originally from again Philadelphia North Philadelphia oh oh yeah so making it out of North Philly you ain't getting no data science or finance education up in North Philly like no, how no. does how did it feel leaving 
North Philly to go to school and realizing that things were not the same. Things are not what it, what the streets say it out to be. So it was a little, it was a little weird for me personally. I was the first, the first male graduate in my family. Um, so mm-hmm. me and my cousin, we're the same age. We went to college around at the same time. So we graduated high school. He went to Villanova, I went to Penn State. And, you know, being from those environments and going up to Penn, a school like Penn State, it's like, whoa, it's like a culture shock. Like, it looked great on the on the landscape of things when you start to dive deeper into, like, um, some of the infrastructure of the buildings, you'll see, like, old racist undertones. Like, you'll see my my ex-girlfriend, dad, was up there visiting me, and he seen, like, a, a swastika engraved oh, wow. on And he got so offended by it, rightfully so, but I, I never, I didn't see it until he pointed it out. Like, but my time at Penn State was great, though. It was like a, a breath of a fresh air from home. Like, I didn't have any, like, racial controversies up there, luckily. So me and my group of friends, um, we had a good time uh, getting away from that Philadelphia lifestyle, having to always be on guard and making sure you were in the right neighborhoods and not trying to get into no altercations. But to me, it was a good change of pace. It was the perfect distance from home, so I can go home whenever I felt like it um, to see my family. But um, it's all about me laying the foundation that, you know, we can leave Philadelphia to go somewhere. Like, I'm leaving Philadelphia now to go to New York, and it's just like, you know, that's another stepping stone in my family that I'm trying, that I'm, that I'm breaking. So. Got you. So you talk about leaving Philly. Was going to school the first time you actually left Philly for a long period of time, or just leaving Philly in general? Uh, yeah, that was the first time I left Philly for a long period of time, um, other than, like, a few vacations in there. Um, but, um, yeah, um, first time I left Philly, Second time I left Philly, I, I stayed in North Jersey for three months for a job training, and I came right back. And now it's just like the biggest move, like it's like a permanent move. So gotcha. I'm excited for it. Okay, so you mentioned vacations. Like, how, where did travel start for you? Like, was that something triggered at, by your parents that, you know, because you these mean streets of North Philly, we got to get these kids out for the summer. Or was it just just opportunity arising and mom dukes and pops was like, let's go. So my my parents' situation is a little unique. My both my parents are just would are deceased. So it's kind of oh, like different so awesome. Yeah. My family, uh, my family, it's like a village that raised me, like my aunts and my grandma. So both sides of my family is pretty active in my childhood. So I think my first vacation, I was like five years old. I went on the Disney cruise. No nice. more. I don't remember much about it. I just remember like seeing Mickey, but that was like a Disney cruise I went on. Um, after that, it was like a bunch of family unions down in Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, um, Florida, stuff like that. Um, and I went on a cruise. I was like 14. Um, we went to Haiti, and that was like my first time actually experiencing like. That's <laughs> where I'm from. That's the that's the home country there. That's the home. <laughs> that's the home country right there. So. You know, tell people how amazing that country is. Look, you ain't got to say because I told you to, but listen, man, it's different. It was a great experience. I think I went to, like, the touristy parts, though, because, you know, the cruise lines, be, I think it's, like, uh, was it Lebanese? Labadee. Like, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think um, it was a good time. I definitely enjoyed it. They had, like, a, they had, like, food for us and everything, like, the native food and all that. It was great. Um I went to a few other countries. went to, like, Cosmo, Mexico, St. Thomas, St. Martin. Um, oh, I could tell which I could tell which cruise lines he was on. He was on Royal Caribbean. He was on Carnival. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was on a Disney cruise. Look, we took off. So I we went. I took a I took a cruise to Cuba, and um, one of the uh, while we was you know on in the in the dock, there was this Disney cruise right next to us, and all you hear was kids screaming and hollering, and I was like, oh, I'm glad I'm not on that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna let you go. Continue. <clears throat> yeah, yes, yeah, so we did that. We uh, that was a great time. And my first time traveling as an adult. So during my college career, you know, we talked about college earlier. But during my college career, I never did the spring break trips. I never was able to do that. My family never wanted me to go to like Miami with my friends. They was thought something was gonna happen because they wasn't around. So like, 
I could travel, but they had to be there type of thing. They wanted us gotcha, to be gotcha. under, their, under their guidance or whatever. So like mm-hmm. going on the, you know, going on the frat trips with the bras and all the other frats and all the AKs and the Reds. Like what's, that was what's the bras? What's what's the bras? I don't know what the bras is. Well, what is that? <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a member. I'm a member of Omega Soft Opportunity Incorporated. Uh, okay. New at, at Penn State, um, Fall 13. So. Yeah, we we like to have fun in our, in our fraternity, so it's kind of uh, road trips and traveling are like a big thing for us. And I, I never had the opportunity, partly because I had my process got a little delayed from back in the day. So my by the time I got official letters, it was my senior year of college, and everybody else was just focused on graduating. But um, so after college, like my family took me on a crew, another cruise, and we went to some different ports. Um, like San Tropez, um, where else we go? And where else we go? It was, it was just a lot of different. It was like a Norwegian cruise line, so they they put nice. you. Up it was a good time. I, I definitely, I definitely enjoy like the atmosphere and the scenery. Um, in twenty sixteen, I went on my first cruise without my family. Mm. It was a boys' trip. Me and my cousin went on the boys' trip, and that was. It was different. It was a lot. The vibe was completely different. And it was different. Like, you ain't got to worry about the the patriarch and matriarch looking over you. Uh, you guys are moving around in unison, like ah, right, y'all like sharks in the water, trying to figure out, yeah, you know, was, where to bait at. You know what I mean? It was like ten dudes, and we were the only dudes in the ship that was like we had the whole ship. Like the girls was following us. Every one day, it was just like. It felt like some kind of like Jay Z big pimping video <laughs> situation. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. It'd be like that. Yeah, I, I wasn't prepared for that, but it was it was a uh, it was definitely a good time. We had I went to Aruba on that one. I went to Aruba, uh, Turks and Caicos. Uh, what else? We went to Saint Thomas again, Saint Martin again. Nice. And, I mean, people are. be people be sleeping on the cruise lines <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. Uh, cruise is a cheat code to get into as many countries in the Caribbean as possible or, yeah, and the Mediterranean. Good. So, um, you know, that kudos to you. So what does traveling do for you? Um, traveling gives me a new perspective. Um, I like being amongst, like, different cultures. Um, I, I went to diversity, been big my whole life. So after I graduated from grade school, I went to a very diverse high school. So I've always been around different cultures. Um, after... During when I got to, first got to Penn State, my first friends on campus was an Italian kid, a Russian kid, and an Indian kid, and mm-hmm. I was like, that was our group. And I was like, all right, cool, like that was that was that. And then I started hanging with more black people, but that was diverse for me. Like they taught me some things about myself I, and in their culture I'd never seen before. So being able to experience like these things firsthand. When I, when I go to a country, I always talk to people and get their experience on like how I feel to live here, um, also how their views on America. And then like, for instance, I went to, so besides cruises I did traveling, I went to um, Amsterdam and I went to Bali as well. Um, nice. Yeah, that, that was, that Bali trip was like a spiritual journey for me. It was like, a, I went to like the temple, got all the pictures and all that. You get like a, like a aura of peace around you. And so Amsterdam, let's talk about Let's let's talk about that real quick. Like, what mm. was about Bali that made it feel spiritual? So everybody go to the well. It was like this tourist attraction called the temple, and we go to the temple, and like you gotta walk up this mountain. It's like this mountain's high as hell. Walk up this mountain, <laughs> and you going through all of the different rituals. You gotta take your shoes off for certain things. You gotta put the shawl, the uh, the religious garments on to be you know to be able to get inside the temple. And it's just like you just listen to like the waterfall, and it's so like so much peace and quiet, and everybody just sitting there walking around with they with their family, taking pictures, looking at all the religious symbolisms, and then you know, be just it's like a a peaceful journey for everybody. And then once you leave, we just feel like that's it, and just like you know, um, nice. yeah, that 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 was a, a great experience. Plus in Bali, everything is made fresh. Like the food is all fresh. You know, they make juice from scratch. Like you ask for like pineapple juice, pineapple cranberry juice. They put in cranberries and pineapples in the blender and like adding like 
natural sugars to it to make it actual juice. So it's like everything is made from scratch over there. It's like, oh, wow, this is how we should be living in America. For real. Yeah. None of that high fructose syrup <clears throat> and, and uh, artificial flavoring, right? So what excites you about traveling? Like what keeps you going? What, what What's the one thing that you can say um, above all that says, you know, when somebody brings a trip idea to you, you're like, all right, bet, I'm with it. Um, just the, the chance to see something new. Like I'm always, like I draw inspiration from these, uh, from these places because being in your same environment can cause you to get stagnant. So like seeing something different is just like, oh wow, like it give you a brand new idea. It like sparks a creative vibe inside you and it gives you another sense of the world. Like you see a different side mm-hmm. of the world and like, I know America, I know the world is bigger than just North Philadelphia, bigger than the United States. Like, you know, I, I had trips planned before COVID that, you know, I, I want to get back, but we don't know exactly how long it's going to take to actually, you know, get everything back to normal. But I just find like, it, it bring me to appreciate what I do have in America. And it also give me an outside perspective of like, what other people have gone through. And that's what I like about it. And it's like a, the scenery is just amazing. Like I'm, I'm one that like, like to see different pictures of scenery. I take all the different photos on my phone and like random like forest areas or like waterfalls and stuff like that. Cause it's like, I feel at peace when I'm at, when I'm around those type of things. So that's, that's amazing. So you mentioned two things, you mentioned feeling at peace and you mentioned perspective coming from North Philly where the, um, the perception of the black man isn't that great, right? Um, and not just being the black man, um, you are always looking over your shoulders, especially depending on the neighborhood you are in in North Philly, you got your head on a swivel. Um, as a black man traveling the world, now that you've seen places like Bali and different, even different cities, do you feel as though that the black man's treated the same everywhere? Or do you find it that, um, we're treated different. And that's also refreshing as to why Bali was so spiritual for you. <clears throat> I was definitely different in Bali. Um, they made me feel welcome. Um, they, they called me, uh, they actually called me LeBron because I was one of the tallest people <laughs> <in there>. <laughs> <laughs> around. <laughs> but it was just like, everybody was just so friendly. And all, you know, I, we was amongst like the tourist locations and we was amongst like the, the native public as well. So it was just like, regardless of where you went, you felt like, you felt comfortable. My the only problem we really had was it was no street lights, so we didn't know when the when the traffic <laughs> was supposed to stop. So, so <laughs> not, you know, coming from where I come from, you you, you tend to feel safe. You tend to feel safer in different areas because it's not that certain. You don't got to worry about the same things, kind of. You know. Gotcha. And, and then, and you're also not bringing that baggage with you when you travel. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing because it sounds like you're not the type of person that brings that trauma, brings that, you know, mental mental captivity of the North Philly experience to you wherever you go. Cause you sound like you're you're the type of person that um attracts the energy that you want. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's and that's dope. Cause I mean that's something that, you know, we need to repeat that for the people in the back because you know, um, once you get to leave, you know, your borough, your city, your hood, um, it's different. You know what I mean? Um, not always better different, but it is a different experience that makes you appreciate, one, what you have, and two, appreciate that, like, things aren't always the same, right? Or am I just speaking for you out of turn? Oh, no, no, that's, that's definitely correct. Like, you got to be able to separate where you at from where you're going and people can't tend to do that um, in certain, live in certain lifestyles in certain cities. So uh, if you go into it with the fact that this is a new environment and nobody's on that type of time, I don't have to be on that type of time either. You won't invite, you know, unwanted drama, so. Awesome, awesome. So so where were you when the, the world shut down, right? COVID, <clears throat> COVID is something that's been brewing for a while. Um, you know, we hear stuff all the way in China, but we don't think that's going to come over here. And I'm going to preface this with y'all Philly people didn't think or took or still don't take this thing serious. So I'm going to start with, <laughs> you know, 
where were you when things shut down and what were your thoughts? Was it because I was talking to somebody else and they kind of, you know, brought it to perspective, you know, just before you get to speaking, it's like there's a gravity of which the Philly mindset is. It's like, you know, it's shoot, it's one of the murder capitals. And so most people are worried about a bullet before they're worried about a virus. Exactly. And so not to put it, not to put words in your mouth and nothing like that, but like tell us where you were when everything shut down and what were your sentiments during that time? Uh, so I was I was home actually. Um, I was planning. I was supposed to go to Atlanta uh, two weeks before the world shut down. My alarm was having this bachelor party out there, and we had to cancel it. Um, but I was home in Philly, thinking, all right, they said two weeks shut down. I think should be back to normal. We, you know, maybe we can go. But then that two weeks came, and then nothing changed. And you know, everybody stuck in the house next you got everything shutting down. It's like, damn, we can't do nothing. We got people going over to Delaware trying to get, you know, liquor and all this other stuff. Everything was shut down. It's like, all right, damn. So you got stuff happening in Delaware now that usually wouldn't happen because all the food mm. in Delaware. And it's just like, people felt like they was trapped. Like people felt like, kind of like they, for lack of a better term, they was incarcerated and they had no, no place to go. They couldn't do anything. And like people not used to sitting at home with their thoughts. Like you're not used to sitting in the house with just your, your thoughts and being aware of your feelings. And people used to being active and moving around, trying to mask how they really feel. And they couldn't do that because the world was shut down. So um, how I took it, well, I was in school at the time. So I was just focusing on class. Um, also trying to like different things, like different cooking recipes and stuff like that to stay afloat. I would go for walks to try to like, for my mental health, but just try to do anything I could to like keep that sense of normalcy. Um, also different friends that would, you know, come in and out in the safe capacity <laughs> in my house. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Try to, um, try to stay as, as normal as possible while being safe. Cause like I got older family members. So like, they're like 60, 70 years old and, Right. It was at risk and you don't want to, you know, be the one that put them at risk because you're being selfish. So I, I tried, I stayed put the whole time until August. And so you mentioned, you mentioned, um, you know, people who have struggling to like sit with their thoughts. Um, you know, did you get a chance to sit with your thoughts and be introspective and did you grow from it? Uh, yeah. So I, I sit with my thoughts often. I, I, one thing I try to do is be aware of how I'm feeling and what's going on inside me um, so I could be uh, the best version of myself for myself and other people. Because um, I, I, I believe in manifestation. So you, you you get back the energy you put out. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm, you know, okay with myself before I deal with other people because I don't want to be negative. You know, sometimes words hurt more than action. So you don't want to uh, say the wrong things to people. So you try to stay, I try to stay mindful of everything. So um, what I learned was, I mean, it's hard. It was just a hard time. My biggest, my biggest concern was just like the whole not being able to get a haircut thing. Like looking like <laughs> it, was just, it was just like looking listen, rough. Like it was just like. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you real quick. The first few episodes of this show, of season one, all done over IG. I ain't got no filters. I wasn't gonna put no filters on. I was. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, but I, I I persevered through and you know what? The content was more important than what I looked like. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I definitely understand what you was talking about. Yeah, it, it was just that was the reference aspect for me. It's just like damn, I can't I can't even get a haircut. I could talk to people on the phone and ask for normal. See, I can go walk, take a walk or something, like order food and do all this other stuff, but I I can't just look like myself. Like that was just the biggest part for me. So now so now you know, I'm going to go back to what I, the statement I was saying earlier before you were able to kind of like um, expound on your experience. Philly, what's the deal, bro? Like Philly was one of those cities that was like Philly is Philly was worse than Florida before Florida became as bad as it is today. And so what was it? And, and I know you mentioned it. It's it's really a mindset of people in Philly. You know, people look at Philly and New York are two different things. Right. But if you look at it, everybody's on a grind. Everybody's moving. You know what? And stopping people stops their hustle. So, you know, was that really it? Or was it just like, you know, the masses was just tired of everything that everything else going around. And this is just one more thing. 
so I, I, I do believe we're like, so we had like a wild summer with, on top of the pandemic with all the social injustice stuff. And like, Philly is just a, always an a, a aggressive in general. Like, it's always some kind of aggression, regardless of who's involved. It's like a, you have to be on edge to feel safe in Philadelphia. And like, you said you mentioned the opportunity aspect of it. So, like, New York is bigger in the sense they get they got more opportunities than what people can shine and get their money and do all the other stuff. And Philly, them opportunities are kind of limited. Even though it's a big city, the opportunities that New York see is very limited than the opportunities that Philly see. So people need to say they try to take advantage or try to like try to get take somebody else's spot and it causes causes beef. Like I never thought in the pandemic we'll have the highest murder rate out of any city in the country right now. Like Jeez. like and I mean, this, Philly, this long, we had 11 shootings in one night. And I was like, what the hell? Like, it was nobody. I mean, because yeah. the stats at one point show Philly, Chicago, New Orleans, um, and a couple other cities were, like, top five murder capitals of the world. I mean, of the of this nation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, if not the world. You know what I mean? Um, mass incarceration has increased. Um, I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, actually, Camden... Um, was in there at one point as well. So, um, you know, it's 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 interesting because you would you would think that a city like this would kind of come together and try to figure out ways to make it work. Um, but it sounds like the the loss of opportunity created more of a dog eat dog environment, which led to an increase. Which I mean, of course, you know, um, employment goes down, crime goes up, but yeah. you know. Outside looking in, this is the city of brotherly love, right? Um, but how brotherly is the city when things when things hit the fan? Um, so so yeah, I mean, I appreciate that perspective because I mean, um, you know, you have some cities that you know decided, hey, you know what? Let's let's collaboratively follow mask ordinance, right? Let's collaboratively collaboratively, you know, find ways to support the community. Um, but you know, when there aren't that many resources to start with, um, collaboration, I guess, is the last thing to to to, to think about because everybody's got to eat. Exactly. You know, like you said, as big as New York is, some industries never shut down. Delivery services, food, um, and I mean, and you think about it, as big as Philly is, everybody can't afford to stay open or maintain COVID nineteen guidelines to be able to stay open and continue to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know about when money's not coming in, what that leads to. That leads to, you know, coping with your feelings and coping with what's going on through substance abuse. You know what I mean? And so that probably was at an all-time high in years. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel for the people of the city of Philadelphia and cities around and around the world that, you know, steal and suffer with that at, on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like all, all the looting was just like, uh, just, oh, that was. I uh, mean, you know, that was you know senseless, especially in the black communities. You man, know what I mean? Was crazy, Philly was Philly was reckless. It was. I know. Um, election night, they they boarded up everything. Um, for all the um um, uh, what you call it, announcements of uh whatever the the juries were gonna go over this past summer, that was just. Like, what I didn't understand is, um, you know, my mom lives in West Philly. Um, we're there all the time. You know, Philly is a food desert for the most part. And, you know, to go and take down the supermarkets in a food desert, where where does that make sense? You know what I mean? And in yeah. your own community. In, in, in like, I'd understand if it was like a Whole Foods. And I mean, I'm not saying anybody go do this. But I'm not saying if it's a Whole Foods, but, you know, Mr. Brown, he put a shop right in every hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, granted, it is a white man, but Brown's shop rights are employing Black, supporting Black, catering to Black, and those were ravaged the most because they were in Black communities and they felt like we need to do something. But why do it in your own home? You know what I'm saying? Like... So yeah. I think that was something also big about Philly. And then, like I said, a lot of cities around the nation where frustrations were so high that I think um, 
common sense and decency kind of went out the window. You know what I mean? So um, I, I want to shift things back over to to COVID, really, and how are you able to adjust to the new normal? Like, what does your new normal look like? <clears throat> Um, prior to this, this PA shutdown, I was hitting the gym with a mask, of course. It's just, everything was just, like, kind of back to normal before this new shutdown we got in place now. Uh, just, we got to wear a mask everywhere. Um, I was never really big on, like, large gatherings anyway, so I, I, that, really, that really didn't bother me. But I like going out to eat, so, like, going out to eat was, like, when, once that came back, I was like, all right, I'll wear a mask, set a table, take it off to eat, that's no problem. Um, but gotcha. my, my my normal now, I mean, everything closed, so I'm actually probably going to head over to Jersey later tonight and go out. <laughs> but that's, you know, I'm trying to keep some kind of normalcy as I head into the new year because, like, like I said, this this mental health thing is uh, it's very important, bro. But. Got you, got you. So um, let's, let's move on back to a little bit of travel information, right? So, like, with... You you mentioned earlier that you had some trips that you had planned. Mm-hmm. Um, does I mean this is the obvious, but you know, are you second guessing how you move moving forward um, as far as travel wise? And um, with that said, like, what are some things that you would tell somebody that's looking into traveling, um, domestic or international, to kind of get them started and kind of get them on the right path? Uh, so how I, how I plan on moving moving forward? Um, of course, you got mask up, and that's always that's the the rules now. But uh, my thing is the airline. Some airlines got the middle seat. They open up the middle seat again. And I just can't. I can't rock with that. I need to be able to sit by my, next to nobody, like just me. That's it. So that's something I'll, I'll look into. Um, also, my trips recently has been like more local. I went to Ocean City. This past summer with my family, um, and I went to DC for a weekend. Other than that, I've been keeping it local for international purposes. I was supposed to go to the Bahamas for New Year's, but I canceled that. Um, okay. Yeah, I canceled that because of my move. I I needed more time. But um, what I would suggest to people is just you know be be safe. Please you know social distance. Also, from a money standpoint, I mean I know everybody like unemployment's at an all time high and nobody really has the extra funds but if you plan on traveling you can plan on fund you could plan on funding it by saving some money like whatever income you get you could put like 10 percent towards a travel fund to make sure that you have the appropriate funds so um you know just just be smart be safe mask up and follow the social distancing guidelines and go from there i know everybody's going to mexico i don't know how big they, they i don't know how high they covid numbers spiked up but um, I, I would try to avoid those popular areas that, <laughs> that was popular all summer. And like I know my, my sister, she's about to go to uh, she so, went to, she went to um, Dubai. That was her, mm. her yeah, big stepper. I don't know. So, but she went to Dubai uh, for her honeymoon, um, and she said it was pretty it was pretty open over there. Everything was back to normal. We just had to wear a mask. So. Okay. I would try to go for the less populated areas and that's my suggestions. Okay, awesome, awesome. So what do you guys, what do you have coming up that you might want people to follow or, you know, what's next for you? <clears throat> um, actually, so, you know, so I'm moving uh, next week uh, to New York. I have a friend out there. She's trying to get me involved in some uh, some beard model stuff. So I think that's that's next on the journey. I mean, you got the beer game going on. So, I mean, it might me. work. You know what I mean? She trying to get me involved in that. Um, so, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, also, like, focusing on my career, working on my health. I got I'm getting a personal trainer out there um, in New York to help me with, like, boxing and everything. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got on the, the, the docket for me. Like, And I also, okay. I'm, I'm planning some trips as well. I just got to figure out where I want to go. Um, all right, well, I got some ideas for you. Let's link up. Okay. Um, so tell us where, where we can find you and, you know, what's your social handles? Okay, uh, so my IG, um, underscore uh, just George one and Twitter, underscore just George. Also on Clubhouse, underscore just George one as well. That's where you can find me at. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, look, brother, I appreciate you hopping on and really being open to sharing your story. 
Um, you know, hopefully we can get you back on late in later seasons to kind of get an update to see how life's been moving post COVID. You know what I mean? Yes, sir.